fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high-yo silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains brought law and order to a lawless frontier and made possible the winning of the West. He fought for the weak against the strong, for the innocent against the guilty. The stories of his adventures have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear, from out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Tunnel's waiting for us outside of town. We've got to hurry. Hi, oh, Silver, away! The Lone Ranger thundered into the small camp he shared with his faithful Indian companion Tonto, not far from Mercer City. Oh, oh, Silver! Oh, boy! Oh, there! Oh! There. oh. Oh, what, what matter? There's plenty of the matter. Call Scout. Here, Scout. It's good he's saddled. We have to ride, Tonto, and ride fast. Uh-huh. I just came from town. Tonto, the sheriff's been murdered. Oh, what, Pat? And we've been blamed for it. Oh, that bad. Bad? It's even worse than it seems to be. Do you know what this means, Kimasabe? We exposed Foster and Yank Billings and Dr. English. We proved that Mrs. Christie wasn't insane. That those three planned to kill her. Uh-huh. But now the only man who knows we proved it is dead. We are blamed for his death. And nothing Mrs. Prisky can say will be believed. Because Foster made the town's people think she's insane. And the sheriff had no chance to tell them the truth. And what we do? First, Mrs. Christie must be rescued. Uh-huh. Then we can plan our next move. Ready, Tonto? Uh-huh. Me ready. Then let's go. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Tonto. Silver, away! In Mercer City, the brutal murder of Sheriff Muncie had shocked everyone. Lem Shilley, Muncie's chief deputy, but now acting sheriff, had taken Mrs. Christie into his office and, in the presence of a small group of witnesses, was questioning her. What did you pay that masked fellow to kill the sheriff? He didn't kill him, I tell you. He didn't. If he didn't, who did? That man right there. Foster? Yes, I saw him do it. Nonsense. He... I tell you, Lem, the woman's out of her mind. Everyone here knows how she's claimed to be Mrs. Christie, even in the face of direct evidence that she is. Oh, you crooked schemer. Now don't start a rumpus, ma'am. What's more, both Christie here and Dr. English will testify to the fact that I tried to save Muncie's life. When the masked man attacked him, I ran to help Muncie. Unfortunately, I arrived too late. You fellas will back that up? He's telling it to you straight, Lamb. He is. We were present and saw the whole thing. Well, ma'am, what do you say to that? They're lying. They told you nothing but lies. Sheriff Muncie knew the truth. You can say that now that he ain't alive to deny it. Oh, can't you see how you've been fooled? Can't you see how Foster's twisted everything around to make it look as though nothing I say is true? You're giving him just the chance he wants. You don't stop him. He and his outlaw will sell my husband's property and disappear. Then you'll know the truth, but it'll be too late. You know, ma'am, I honestly think you believe everything you're saying. But of course I do. Why wouldn't I when I've only told you the facts? May I interrupt, Lem? Well, sure, Doc. What is it? 
I just wanted to say that I've had experience with mental cases such as this before. Uh, in each case, the afflicted person is thoroughly convinced of the truth of his particular hallucination. In other words, the fact that she believes what she's saying doesn't indicate that her story has any basis. In fact, quite the contrary. Uh, what it really indicates is that her uh, uh, mental illness has progressed to the point where it may be incurable. I for Luton language, Doc, but I'll take your word for it. You ought to know what you're talking about, even if I don't. Well, there you are, ma'am. Now, why can't you tell us where that masked fella can be found? We'll you're go... You're looking for me? Hey, what's the... Don't move. Now, don't keep an eye on them. Uh, That's him, Lamb. It's the killer. I figured as much when I seen the mask. Stranger, I'd advise you as to... As long keep... as Foster's doing your thinking for you, Lem, I'll do without your advice. Mrs. Christie, get outside quickly. Our horses are in back. Please be careful. We'll be right with you. You'll hang for this. You'd already made up your mind to hang me for Muncie's death, Lem, so what's the difference? You can't... Come, Tonto. Uh, I'll give you some advice of my own before we leave, Lem. What's that? In the future, be careful whose story you accept in a case like this. Blast you, what? Never get so interested in questioning a prisoner that you forget to watch the back door. He's gone. Come on, after him. Shoot the dog. Miss. It's howling too fast to get good aim. You've got to get them, Lamb. You bet I will. I'm forming a posse right now, and I'm bringing them back, dead or alive. The masked man and Tonto, racing from town, did not stop until they had reached their camp. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, 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 oh. Let me help you down. But, but why are we stopping? Shouldn't we keep on? They'll be after us. But they won't catch us, Mrs. Christie. Just the same. We've got to decide what to do. I think you understand what I mean. It's, it's almost the first of the month. Another week. Exactly. And... Another week, Mrs. Christie, and your husband hangs. Unless we prevent it. Oh, we must. And we will. But how? That's something I won't know until I'm on the ground. You, you mean you're going to Kansas? I am. Oh, you're doing so much, and you're a stranger. Mrs. Christie, you're in trouble. And you're a long way from Texas, where you're known. If Tonto and I didn't help you, I'm afraid no one would. So we'll do what we can. I wish I knew how to thank you. Never mind that. We haven't much time for talk. First, we must decide what to do with you. I'll go with you. I'm strong. Well, and that's I... impossible. I'm sorry because I know how you must feel. But Tonto and I must not only travel fast, we've got to be ready for anything that may come up. You'll just be in the way. But what a... It's too bad there's no one here you can trust who could hide you until we return. I, uh... Wait. Yes? I, I just thought I... I don't know why I didn't remember before, but... But I do have friends near here. You have? It, it, it just come back to me. People Tom and I knew well back home, they, they moved here two years ago. There are people you're sure you can trust? Oh, yes. Where are they? They, um, they have a place near uh, uh, Red Springs. That's not ten miles away. Yes. That's it, then. Tonto will take you there. What's the name? Th their name? Yes. Who are they? I'll have to know in order to get in touch with you later. Oh, yes, sir. Their name is Lathrop. Glenn and Mary Lathrop. I'll remember that. Tonto, uh -huh. Mrs. Christie is riding with you to Red Springs. Uh -huh. Get her there as quickly as you can and return at once. Uh, Tonto, do it. And Mrs. Christie, yes. don't worry. You can believe me. Your husband won't hang. In Mercer City, Foster was stuffing clothes into a valise. When the door to his room opened and Yank Billings, who called himself Tom Christie, entered. What are you up to? I thought I heard you in here. Hand me those shirts. Huh? Didn't you hear me? I said, hand me those shirts. Now, you hold on a minute. What's the valise for? Just where do you think you're going? To Dodge City. Huh? Didn't I speak clearly enough that time either? What's in Dodge City that you want? I have business to attend to there. You wouldn't be running out on me, would you? Just what do you mean by that? Just what I said. You never mentioned no business to me that it'd take you to Kansas. Seems funny that all of a sudden there'd be some I never knew about. I'm just wondering. Wondering what? Well, if maybe you ain't losing your nerve since the masked fella took Mrs. Christie away. Yeah. Uh... I'm just wondering if maybe you ain't planning to clear out. Leaving me and Doc English to face the music. Very well. If I must explain, I must, I suppose. I haven't much time, and I was hoping you'd have sense enough to realize what I had to do without my explaining. Go on. Explain away. I'm listening. Yank, what do you suppose is the first thing that masked man will do now that he doesn't have to worry about Mrs. Christie's safety? I don't know. What? Head for Kansas, of course. 
Don't you realize that in a week, Tom Christie will be hanged in Dodge City? You ain't asking me to feel sorry for him, are you? Oh, you stupid fool. The masked man will try to prevent Tom's hanging. What can he do? I don't know. But from what I've seen of him so far, I won't feel safe until I know Tom's been hanged. That's why I'm going to Dodge City also. To see that nothing goes wrong at the last minute. All right. Then I'll go with you. Have you forgotten that they're hanging Tom because they believe he's you? Hmm. Gosh, I almost did at that. Tom Christie looks enough like you to be hanged, as long as you weren't around. Put the two of you side by side, however, and the law wouldn't be fooled for a moment. Hmm. I reckon that's all right. So you will stay here. If you have any notion that I'm running away, forget it. I don't run from any fortune until it's necessary. In this case, it isn't. We've got the game in our hands as long as we play it correctly. Mm-hmm. I'm taking the stage to Wyndham and catching the cars there. The masked man and that Indian will probably ride to Kansas. I'll get there ahead of them easily. And when you do? I'll inform the authorities that I've learned of the possibility of a jailbreak. Nothing else will be necessary. Once the law's been warned, I doubt that even the masked man can prevent Tom's hanging. Well, I'll tell you something, Foster. Yes? The way you put it, it sounds all right. Fact is, I ain't doubting you at all. But here's something to recollect just in case you do get notion. Well? I've killed men for double-crossing me before, Foster. And I ain't got no objections to killing again. Ah, I reckon that's plain enough. <laughs> uh, don't waste threats on me, Yank. Now hand me those shirts and let me finish packing or I'll never catch that stage. Foster, however, had underestimated the speed with which the masked man and Tonto could travel on their great stallions. He didn't know when he approached the office of the sheriff at Dodge City six days later that the Lone Ranger and Tonto had reached town 24 hours ahead of him. Sheriff Burgess? Sure, that's me. What can I do for you? <laughs> you mean, what can I do for you, Sheriff? Huh? I'll explain. I'd better introduce myself first. My name's Foster. I'm a lawyer. Practice down Texas way. Yeah? About a week ago, certain information came into my hands, which I felt should be passed down to you. Information, huh? What kind of information? I believe you have a prisoner here by the name of Yank Billing. Sure. He's out back now. He hangs first thing in the morning. Then, Sheriff... Be sure that he does hang. Uh -huh. I mean that. Because recently I heard a rumor that friends of Billings would attempt to break him free. What's that? I might add, a very well-founded rumor. Mister, sit down. I think you got some things to explain. Uh, gladly. Now then, uh, who do you hear say this? Well, I wish I could tell you, Sheriff, but I can't. It was simply information I picked up as part of the conversation among some tough characters in a cafe where I had a drink. No one could tell me who they were. Whereabouts was this? At Parsons. At Parsons? And you heard it a week ago? Why didn't you get word to me afore? Well, because I had business of my own to attend to first. And I wanted to tell you of this in person. I was afraid a letter might not be taken seriously enough. Mm. What's your interest in this? A lawyer is an officer of the court, Sheriff. And as such, I'd naturally dislike seeing a convicted criminal go free. Uh-huh. Well, this one won't. You know anything about Yank? Oh, I've heard his name. Nothing Anybody else. mentioned to you that he claims he ain't Yank Billing? <laughs> well, don't all outlaws claim to be someone else? Yeah, I reckon most of them do. Well, who does this fellow say he is? Huh? Oh, he swears up and down he's handles Tom Christie. Did you say Christie? Sure, why? You know anybody of that name? Well, I'm acquainted with a Tom Christie in Texas. Texas, huh? Oh, now, that's funny. What part of Texas? San Carlos. Yeah? Then that's the Tom Christie this fellow claims to be. We never paid any attention to him, of course. But if you know this here Christie by sight... You'd like me to have a look at Billings? Just so, if you wouldn't mind. You see, I know he's Yank Billings. But at the same time, I'd feel a sight better if someone could tell me he ain't Tom Christie. Well, I'll look him over now, if you wish. That's fine. I got a redskin working for me a couple of days at a hired yesterday. Must be out back, I reckon. I'll let him take you. Tonto! Hi, Tonto! Tonto? Say, you don't know him too, do you? Know him? Sheriff, I most certainly do. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama, 
Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. When Sheriff Burgess called at Tonto, Foster was unable to conceal his surprise. So you know him, huh? You said that as though maybe it was important. Well, I... Yeah? Uh, nothing, Sheriff. Nothing. Didn't you start to say something about Tonto? Uh, Tonto? Say, what's the matter with you? Uh, you'll have to pardon me, Sheriff. I misunderstood you, I... That wasn't the name I thought you said. I, I never heard of an Indian by that name. Well, I wouldn't think that was a handle easy to mistake. What did you figure I said? Well, it doesn't matter. It isn't the same. Well, it seems like the engine didn't hear me. He must be clear in the back. I'll get him if you'll wait a second. Yes, of course. I won't keep you long. You. Lucky for you, Foster, that you saw these guns. Step over here to the window. I don't see why... How'd you get here so fast? If you value your health, don't talk. Just obey orders. But I refuse to. the window. Get across this saddle. You can't Hurry. You won't get away with this. Steady, Silver. The sheriff will be looking for me. But you won't be here to be found. Come on, boy. Now, here he is, Mr. Foster. Well, I'll be doggone. There, no feller here. Uh, sure enough, ain't. But where in blazes did he get to? Oh, oh, oh. That night, not far from Dodge City. So you came here to warn the sheriff, did you, Foster? What if I did? I have to give you credit. You're a crook, but you're clever. You knew I'd be heading this way. I still don't know how you got here before me. Two good horses cutting across country can still make better time than the cars, Foster. Yeah, so it seems. If I hadn't stopped you, you'd have told the sheriff Todd was with me. I would have. And if you'd been allowed to see Christie, you'd have denied knowing him. You would have claimed he wasn't Christie, making sure he'd hang. Who's that? It should be Tonto. I've been expecting him. Aye, Kimosabe. Aye. Ho, ho, scout. Ho, ho, power. Ho. You're right on time, Tonto. Uh, me get way soon after you leave. I'm glad you did. I needed you. Uh, now, look here, both of you. What are you planning to do with me? I demand that you're you let me... You're in no position to demand anything. I still say I'm that... going to dispose of you by borrowing an idea you gave me. That I gave you. Right. Tonto. Huh? The materials you use for disguises are in my saddlebags. Get them and bring them here. Let me get them. Disguise? What are you talking about? You're just about about Tom Christie's build, Foster. Me? And about the same height. What if I am? Your features are nothing alike, but I think Tonto can remedy that. At least well enough to pass in the dark. Who are you? Here. Your thing. Good, Kimosabe. Don't move, Foster. You can't get away. You haven't prepared a disguise in quite some time. We'll see if you've lost any of your skill. same night, acting upon Foster's warning, Sheriff Burgess redoubled the guard around the jail. That you, Sheriff? Yeah. Seen anything out of the way? Not a thing. Well, that fellow Foster was likely talking through his hat, but it wouldn't do to take chances. I've got men on both sides watching and in the rear. I'm leaving you here in front. Alone? Well, I was going to have that confounded engine give you a hand. I don't know where he's got to. He left a while back, but said he wouldn't be gone over an hour. Maybe I'd better call Jake around. You want Tonto? Oh, here you are. Why weren't you back afore? Oh, me not gone long. Hmm. Never yet seen the engine that had any idea of time. Look here, Tonto. If anybody tried to bust in this jail, do you think you'd have nerve enough to drill them? Oh, me not afraid. Fair shot, are you? Uh. Well, if he ain't but here is. 
You reckon he'll be your help enough, bud? Sure. I'd rather have a redskin listening beside me than anybody else. Any shooting might have to be done, I can handle myself. Good enough. Tonto, any orders Bud gives you, you follow, Savvy? Hmm. You heavy. Okay. That's settled. But I'm going around back. If trouble comes at all, that's where it'll most likely hit. But I'll be dropping back every once in a while to see how things are going. Me and Tonto will keep everything in line. I'll see that you do. Well, Injun, you heard what he said. You take your orders for me. Uh. You got pretty good hearing? Huh? Then keep your ears peeled for any noises you think shouldn't be. We don't want anybody sneaking up on us. What that? Huh? You Where? Look, look by tree. I don't see nothing. You sure you seen... Hey, what? Oh. Not a... It's all right. He's out? Uh. You didn't hit him too hard, did you? Oh, uh, him not hurt. Good. How much time have I got? Sheriff, come back soon. Then hurry. I left Foster behind the cottonwood. Get him while I find the deputy's keys and unlock the door. Um, me get him. Uh, here they are. I have to find the right one. Not much time. Uh, not that one. Oh, this one doesn't fit. Here's one. Looks like it might do it. Good. Pato. Uh, me, me got him. He's heavy. I'll give you a hand. Uh, <laughs> Inside with him. You lead the way. Wait. What what matter? There's someone coming. Tonto, it's Mrs. Christie. Oh, that's bad. Where'd you come from? I thought we left you in Red Springs. How did you... I lied to you. I couldn't stay there. I didn't have friends in Red Springs. I I just said that so you wouldn't suspect I'd follow. But what are you doing here? I came by train. The same train Foster rode. He didn't see me, though. I've been watching the jail ever since. I knew I'd find you that way. If you're caught here... You'll be jailed yourself. Please, I want to help. There's only one way in which you can help. I'll do anything, anything. I'll hold you to that. We have work to do in here and no time to waste. Get to those cottonwoods as fast as you can and stay there. We'll meet you as soon as we've finished. But what and is... your husband will be with us. You mean that... that... tonight he goes free if you follow orders. I will. Oh, I will. Then do as you've been told. Tonto, lead the way back to the cells. It was scarcely half an hour later that Sheriff Burgess heard a smothered groan as he rounded the corner of the jailhouse. What the... Bud, what in blazes happened? Where's Tonto? Did you get hit? Now, here, can you get on your feet? Give me a hand, Sheriff. Now, where's Tonto? Oh, does that dirty red skin hit me, Sheriff? Hit me when I wasn't looking. I just came to. My head feels like it was ready to bust in two. Yank villains. That engine was in on the scheme to bust Yank free. Did he steal your keys? I, um, no, they're here. That don't mean he didn't take them, then put them back. How much time did he have? He hadn't hardly gone before he knocked me out. Almost a half hour. Come on. If he ain't gone... Door's locked. They could have locked the door after him, just like they could have returned your keys. Quick, open up. There. Yank! Hi, Yank, you there? You don't answer. That's his cell ahead there. Hey, Yank! I'm betting every doggone dollar I got he's gone. He... Well, I'll be blasted. It's him. And sound asleep. Well, did you ever see the beat? But the engine, why'd he hit me? If he want out to set Yank loose, then what was he up to? Well, there's only one guess I can make. Yeah? Something must have scared him off before he could finish. Maybe he heard something or thought he saw me coming back. Mm-hmm, that could be. Well, whatever it was, you keep quiet about this, Savvy. Huh? If the boys ever heard what happened... We'd be left right out of town. At the same time, several miles from the jail. Oh, oh, Tom, Tom, I was so sure I'd never see you again. For so long there, I thought you'd been killed. There, there, Beth. We're together again. Everything will be all right. Thanks to the masked man and Tonto. Everything isn't all right, Tom. But I'm free. You're I'm free. But the same men who tried to rob and murder both you and your wife are still at large. Yank Billings, Dr. Ringlish, Foster. But you left Foster back there in jail. He'll be released as soon as they discover the substitution we made. Then what are you... There's still work ahead of us. Those three men must be exposed and brought to justice once and for all. I hope they go to jail for life. After all they've done, they'll be fortunate to get off that easily. Hey, Tom. Yes? You and your wife go back to Mercer City. Tonto and I'll meet you there. You, you're leaving us now? I want both of you as far from Dodge City by dawn as you can get. But you, what do you plan to do? I'm staying behind long enough to see just what happens when they discover their prisoner has escaped. The 
it was at dawn the following morning that Sheriff Burgess, accompanied by his chief deputy, re-entered the jail. Well, bud, this is the hardest part of being a sheriff. The hanging, huh? It's nasty work, no matter how long you've been at it. Well, we'll do what our duty calls for. Everything's ready, ain't it? Just like it should be. There's a crowd gathered outside of the town to see the show already. The doggone fools. I wonder how Billings spent the night. From the way he was sleeping the last time we seen him, it couldn't have bothered him much at all. Yeah, there he is. Still sleeping just as sound as before. Blamed if he ain't. Give me your keys. Here you are, Sheriff. Hey there, you ain't. Wake up. You ever see such a sound sleeper? Asleep. He ain't no more asleep than I am. What in? Look here. He's been gagged and tied. Come on, give me a hand with him. But who'll do a trick mm. like this? How do I know? Mm. Hurry up and loosen that gag. I'm getting it. Oh. The mask, man. You fools, where have you been? Why haven't you let me loose? You've let Christy... I mean, Billings, get away. This ain't Yang. What in... Say, mister, who are you and how'd you get in here? And what did you have to do with Yang's getting away? Answer fast, by thunder, before I go to work on you. I'm Foster. I'm the man who called on you yesterday. You're crazy. Wipe this stain off my face and you'll see. Let me look at you a little closer. Chumpin' G. Hossafat, you are Foster. The masked man tricked you. He captured me, made me up to look like Billings, left me here and took Billings with him. What masked man? Who are you talking about? What? Wait a second. Something was just thrown through the window. It's a bullet, Sheriff. Huh? A silver bullet. A silver bullet? You must be loco. There ain't but one man in the whole West uses bullets like them. Look there! That's him. A masked man on a white horse. That must be the hombre that threw this year bullet in here. Why, Blazer Sheriff, don't you get it? A silver bullet? That horse. He called his horse silver. Sheriff, that's the Lone Ranger. Sure enough. I don't care who he is. I demand that you follow that man and bring him back. I demand you that... You doggone much. Mister, I don't know why the Lone Ranger done what he done. And I'm going to have plenty of hard time explaining this. You should have. But I never heard of that masked fella ever doing anything without a good reason behind it. I'm setting tight. And when the time comes, I'm betting I'm going to be darn glad things turned out the way they did. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.